Hello, everyone. Let's try to find your seat if you can. I mean, for those of you that, yeah, can find one. So, I'm not really getting ready to go yet. I was just told to very gently and nicely tell everybody to find a seat if they could. Hopefully, all of our scholars are seated. Better? Okay. Just up here trying to follow directions. Okay. 
Good afternoon. Now this is for real. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. I want to take a moment to recognize all the people who have helped our students get to this moment. You, friends and family, have provided the vital love and encouragement during the, what could have been sometimes a difficult part of their lives, or moments at least. You may have even, I, I'm, I'm imagining more than a few of you have even written a check or two, or th three or four. But you are the mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, partners and friends, and the chosen families of these future leaders in public health. Will you please stand so we can acknowledge your contributions? Let's also acknowledge and thank all of the faculty who have made the day possible for our graduates. Our, wait, let me, let me uh, give them their full due. Our faculty are central to the school's mission to improve public health. Whether they work to generate evidence through their research, collaborate to improve the health of Rhode Island communities, or study the great public health challenges we face around the world. Now, will all the faculty please stand so they could be recognized? And I would also like to welcome to our cer ceremony today Brown University trustee Joelle A. Murchison, class of 1995, and trustee emeritus Martin J. Granoff. <laughs> Today, we celebrate the achievements of graduates who have earned degrees in public health. Congratulations to all of you. You have chosen a field where you will take on urgent health challenges from understanding new diseases to communicating public health guidance in the age of misinformation. Your work will make a real difference in the people's health. You will be called, to, you'll be called on to address the needs of the most vulnerable and to reverse generations of health inequities. Today, you take a crucial step in your public health journey. You do so at a time when our school and the field of public health as a whole is undergoing significant transitions. This month has seen the end of COVID, public, the COVID public health emergency. This has a special meaning for many of you because for, for a good portion of you, you were in your second semester at Brown when all of a sudden you were told, pack your things, find storage quickly, leave, and you left with the uncertainty about when you would ever come back. Yet here we are. For some of you, that, that leave was two semesters or more, but here we are. The past three years have demanded more from those of us in public health than, it, that it, than at any other time in my life. COVID reshaped what we study, how we teach, how we share data, and how we think about health itself. These ongoing challenges in public health also open immense opportunities for those of you who are beginning their careers. You, the class of 2023, will help decide how our field emerges from the great challenges of the COVID pandemic. How we apply what we've learned about diseases, but also about discrimination and disinformation. How we prepare for future outbreaks and pandemics, 
but also how we engage with the great inequities highlighted by the pandemic, how we develop effective information strategies in a rapidly evolving media environment and ecosystem, and how we prepare for the deepening health challenges produced by the growing climate crisis. I'd like to tell you it'll be easy, but if that were true, most of you probably wouldn't have chosen this. For our school, this marks this year marked some major milestones and transitions as well. Today, we are graduating our first class of health equity scholars as that program <laughs> continues to grow. And speaking of scholars, the school has an unprecedented three, not the two that I mentioned previously, three Fulbright Scholars this year. That's a big deal. <laughs> Sydney Fisher. <laughs> Otto Olofsson. <laughs> and Rachel Warner. In September, we will celebrate our 10th anniversary as a school. And as you know, our, love, our beloved Deputy Dean Megan Rainey, my comrade in arms during this past year, is leaving Brown after two decades of scholarship and service to lead Yale School of Public Health. We will wish her the best and look forward to seeing her fearless leadership and deep commitment to taking on the health problem, hard problems as she takes root in New Haven. And we'll miss her terribly. Speaking for myself, I will transition out of the role of the interim dean this summer, which means the dean is on his way back. <laughs> and it has been an honor to serve the faculty, staff, and students over the past year. One of the, <laughs> I'm not crying, that's just sweat. That's a, it's a good day to, to cry and say a sweat. Mm. Um, one of the great pleasures of serving as dean is taking part in so many different aspects of the school's diverse community, whether through lunch with faculty, participating in our justice circles, or hearing from students about their work at our monthly common grounds, get-togethers, or doing my impromptu visits with disturbing you as you're trying to study. <laughs> um, but I am proud of what we have accomplished this year. We return to the unique connection and immediate and the immediacy of in-person teaching while retaining the flexibility and new teaching tools we learned in the COVID emergency. Our online MPH is giving working professionals around the globe access to the Brown Public Health experience. We've welcomed new faculty who are leading cutting edge research and practice in critical fields like the information crisis, pandemic preparedness, the history of a humanitarian response, and the impact of climate on health. Our students launched new affinity groups, including Disability Justice as Public Health, that bring together students that, with shared experiences, research interests, and career goals. In everything we do, our goal is to prepare students to respond to the evolving demands of public health and to advance the health of the most vulnerable. Today, we are fortunate to be joined by a public health leader who has served on the front lines of the COVID pandemic. Dr. Ann Zink, our commencement speaker, graduated from the Stanford School of Medicine, completed her emergency residency, completed her residency in emergency medicine at the University of Utah. Her interest in, as a pioneering guide led her to Alaska, 
where she served as president of the state's chapter of the American College of Emergency Physicians. Today, Dr. Zink serves as the 80th president of the Association of State and Territorial Health Office Officials, which has played a critical role in sharing best practices in the COVID, COVID pandemic. And there's some other things I could read about Dr. Zink, and I have a lot of stuff here. But some of that stuff you can, you can read in your program. So I'm going to go off script, which just terrifies the team. Um, <laughs> And I just want to say that I, for the last three days, I've had a, a chance to visit with uh, Ann Zink. And the things that you will find about her, one is she is an amazingly warm, um, kind, highly, in, high, very, very high intellect, as you would expect. Um, but she's funny. So you might not get a chance to see that part of it, because this is a serious moment. Um, <laughs> But uh, she is really a, a, a bright, bright light in public health. Remember this day, remember this name, you will hear more from Ann Zink. Um, but back to the script. <laughs> uh, so and th some of this is pretty interesting. You can drive from one end, of, one end of the state to the other in Rhode Island for about an hour. Now, Alaska is a little bit different. You can look it up on the website, state of Alaska. You could fit the state of Rhode Island into the state of Alaska 425 times. <laughs> and the, the important part of that uh, trivial fact is that reaching many Alaskan communities can take hours, often by seaplane or dog sled. So you can so imagine during the, during the time of the pandemic when they're trying to get out vaccines, how challenging that was. And yet, Beyond the differences in geography and climate, Rhode Island and Alaska face the same underlying public health challenges, from declining trust in public health guidance to inequitable access of care. Our graduating students will confront these same challenges, and I'm delighted to have Dr. Zink with us, have her with us to share her insights as the graduating class gets ready to join her in improving health of, of the public. Um, the other thing I want to, the other tidbit I want to share about Anne is, in terms of her kindness is last night after we were left the president's toast, um, I suggested we finish this intense, really interesting conversation we were having at a bar and, uh, and, the foot, and the basketball game was on. And not a basketball fan, but she, she was a very intent in terms of understanding what was going on. She watched, she got into it, and, um, and you know, that's just remarkable. So, <laughs> so without, without killing any more time, I'd like for you to join, and, and she's really an extraordinary person. You're gonna remember this moment, um, Dr. Ann Zink. Wow, what a treat to be here with you all today. And it was a super fun game. And we don't have professional sports in Alaska. So um, yeah, I need, to, I need to pay attention a little bit more there. But it, it, was, it was really, really great. Um, so thank you. Thank you all for the kind words. And welcome uh, to the class of 2023 Brown School of Public Health. You have been, woohoo, exactly, right? <laughs> You have been doing all of the doings, from turning in your last paper to making sure that your heels worked well with the gown and you were not going to trip, but you have made it. But in life, as in an art, the negative space is as important as the doing. And so before we start, let us pause. Let us pause at this moment in commencement. You've been busy. Breathe, listen, take in the feeling of being surrounded by your fellow students, your parents, your friends, your professors, your successes, and your challenges. Feel the breeze, if you can feel it. Feel the warmth, which I'm sure you can. Acknowledge this moment in time because it is yours. You only get this moment once. Be present in the moment of now. So thank you for pausing with me, but I don't think that they asked me here for a meditation class. I think that they asked me here for your commencement, so let's get started. But how does one start a commencement speech? I liked Bono's. I am Bono. I am a rock star. 
Oftentimes, they're with a parable, like the brilliant speech by David Foster Wallace, where he starts, there were two young fish swimming along and happened to see it pass by an older fish who nods and says, morning, boys, how's the water? The two young fish swim along, and eventually one looks at the other and says, what the hell's water? And he goes on to use the metaphor masterfully to talk about the importance of critical thinking and perspective. But then I'm reminded of Shonda Rhimes, who talks about always wanting to be Maya Angelou. But along the way, she learned that the glowing sparks of her own interest and her own dreams, and discovered that the world was brighter with Maya Angelou and a distinct Shonda Rhimes. I mean, how many people wouldn't have been going into medicine if we had Shonda Rhimes' brainchild, Grey's Anatomy? Yeah, exactly, right? So I will start with my own, inspired by the water in which I now swim. I will start with a tradition that I've learned to love, taught to me by the Inuit and the Athabascan, the Tlingit and the Haidit, and so many other Alaska Native tribes, with a grounding in person, place, and gratitude. I am Anne Zink, wife, mother of two amazing daughters, the eldest daughter of Tom and Carol Braun, both pioneers their own way and people of medicine, originally from a place called Colorado and the land of the Cheyenne people. My family comes from a long line of people in search for a better life. They all wanted to be listed, and I will list none of them now, with waves of immigrants across many nations and lands. I too moved to seek a better life and now live in the stunning land of the Denina people. In a place called Palmer, Alaska, the largest state, and now honored to be in the smallest. I am the Chief Medical Officer for the State of Alaska, the President of the, state, of the Association for State and Territorial Health Officers, practicing emergency physician, but more importantly, practice, humble servant to the practice of health and wellness. An honor to be here with you today in the land of the Wanapanga people for today's commencement. And let me begin with deep gratitude to uh, Interim Dean Obear and beloved educator, to the legendary Deputy Dean Rainey, who has a commencement of her own of sorts today, as she soon leaves her treasured home to take on a new role. To the trustees, to the truly brilliant faculty, staff, parents, friends, and those who are no longer with us today, but whom we remember as they helped us get us here. But most importantly, thank you to you, the remarkable class of 2023 graduates at Brown School of Health. I am honored to celebrate you. I have to admit that when I got the letter to come, I had a very awkward, very large smile come across my face during a work meeting to be a part of this invitation. And it's an extra special time because not long ago, I was sitting where your parents were last weekend, beaming with pride for my own daughter and a faucet of tears. I was excited because being in, in present in one of life's transitions, such as the birth of a child or the passing of a loved one, weddings or funerals, commencement scenarios like this are always a privilege bringing life greater depth and meaning and should not be missed. Being in community, as your classmate Nelson Lee shared on Friday, takes time and energy and should not be taken for granted. And personally, taking that time to reflect on what I wanted to share and be inspired by you was my chance to pause and soak in the marrow of life. So thank you for that gift. You make up a phenomenal group of undergraduates, masters, and PhD students. You represent the next generation of health professionals standing on the precipice of tomorrow. And among you, as previously mentioned, are the health equity scholars. No easy fact for you, for your families, for the school, but meaningful work takes time and we must change the face of public health. Early in my time as chief medical officer, I naively asked an Inuit woman what I could do to help. And she looked straight at me and said, your government and all of your helping only killed our people, took our land, our culture, and our identity. I don't need your help, and the only way I can build trust with you is if you chose to live us, with us for 20 years. Imagine if I had been from her village. Imagine if I had known her for 20 years, or at least someone on my team had. It might not have taken her courageous bluntness, a lot of humble learning on my part, and a worldwide pandemic for us to build the trust we have today. Public health and healthcare need to look different, and today makes a marginal milestone, not only for you, but for Brown and the poll of public health. What a gift you have given to this remarkable, this remarkable profession by graduating your first class. I'm sure each of you, your journeys here were different and valid. You began your journey in the fog of uncertainty in COVID-19, and your faculty were called to the highest levels to serve. You worked they worked tirelessly, not only to support you, 
but to support us, those on the front line of public health and health care. Not only did they teach you, they taught us and the world on TV, in policy, and in their research. And together, we have found a way through. There's a quote by J.R. Tolkien that I shared near the beginning of the pandemic, and I'll share with you today. I wish this need not have happened during my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf, and so do all who live in such times. But it's not for them to decide. We have to decide what to do with our time that is given us. And look what amazing accomplishments you all have done with the time given to you. And while your time here was meaningful, and I'm sure educational, and the president just told you that you are ready to go, I will venture to say you may still not be prepared for your first job, for your first career, or for your life. That's right. You're leaving, as we all do, totally unprepared, except you have the tools. The future is unknown, and nothing and no one can fully prepare you for that. Your life will be like tree pose, always trying to stay upright and making sure you're not falling in one direction. But do not be dismayed when you feel lost or overwhelmed as you follow the sparks of your own heart and you will know you'll be on the right track. Your job is not to fill these buildings or the buildings of the past or a well-trodden path. You are here to imagine the future, a place that those of us who come before you cannot visit even in our dreams. In the wake of such exceptional education, Okay, just reality check, you're about to graduate from Brown, just wanted to make sure you're aware, okay. Um, but also knowing that you're wholly unprepared for the future, I found wondering what I could possibly add, what small tokens I could give you, what words you could carry and pull out of your bag when you were tired and you were worn and you were hot and you were exhausted so that you could find your strength again and your purpose and refine your North Star. As I considered this, I thought about the words and the gifts that were given me and have nurtured my soul from a shy girl who did not want to talk in front of anyone, to someone who did not think that they would graduate high school because of my dyslexia, to Stanley proud, standing proudly before you today, before Congress, and before the world. My journey mirrors the overarching narrative of public health. My shifts in the emergency department were akin to standing on a riverbank, rescuing people from the turbulent river of injury and illness. But to save my patients and to save myself, I had to move upstream. Moving into public health to try to slow the tide of people falling in was a lifesaver for both of us. The emergency department is where I saw all public policy come to fail. And I quickly knew that if I was going to care for my patients, I must care for the larger systems of health. Our health, our mental health and physical health are the cornerstones of our future. We all have to juggle a lot of balls, both personally as well as a society. But the one glass ball that you cannot drop is the ball of your health and your wellness. Healthy economies, healthy nations, healthy families, healthy professions are built with healthy people. And to get there, we must revise and suture back together the wound that has been left open for too long between public health, health care, and people so that we can all heal. As you embark on the journey of your own river of life, as you work to stitch together our fragmented systems, I thought I would share four quick stories, four guiding principles of my life. I would say that there should be three, as my professors always taught me, everything should be in odd numbers, but recently an elder challenged my assumptions and I added a fourth, but oh well, my journey's not complete, so here are the four as of today. The first is show up for the climb. Much like your classmate Kiara Lee said in her great speech on Friday about taking leaps, woohoo, exactly. <laughs> This one was imparted to me by my husband, who I've been fortunate to share the last 20 years. We were second year of med school, and he expressed a desire to climb the east face of Mount Whitney, which is a breathtaking vertical wall of granite that rises sharply from Iceberg Lake, requiring 10 pitches of climbing across the fresh air traverse to reach a 14,473 summit, technically not hard, but intimidating piece of rock. At the base, it was rainy and cold, I was battling a migraine, and I did not want to be there. I gazed up at the vertical wall, and I could not but help but thinking it was impossible. I wanted my bed, I wanted coffee, I wanted Cafe Baroni, and so I subtly suggested that we consider turning around, but my husband had different ideas. And he said, we cannot make the call from the comfort of our bed or the discomfort of difficult but unrelated experiences. The greatest things happen in your life when you show up from the climb. Let's bivouac under the rock as planned and make our decision in the morning at the base of the climb, and so we did. The morning was crisp, the alpine glow touched the tops of the morning peaks, and the clouds had parted. The size of that granite wall was no smaller. However, 
we decided that there were no more excuses, and we started to climb. And with every placement, every foot placement, and every hand placement, we found our way up step by step. And I was reminded of a book that I loved as a child in which a monster lived atop of a mountain, terrifying the village below. But one day, a brave child climbed the mountain, and that monster shrank. And with every step the child took, at the summit, the child discovered a tiny, scared little monster who had been misunderstood by his massive shadow. The monsters of my own climbs, of my own challenges, shrink with perspective and with leaning in. As Michelle Obama says, it's hard to hate up close. Fear was being replaced with beauty and strength and accomplishment. And later, as we pulled ourselves over the last rock ledge to the summit, the experience became a metaphor, a mantra that's inspired me to take on challenges that would have been much easier to say no, and helps me make decisions not based on fear or ease, but instead on purpose. And facing the things that are mean or scary, like political figures whose comments were resulting in death threats, and finding out that his own anger was not as large as his shadow, and approaching him stopped him. Showing up for the climb meant manufacturing our own testing swabs with medium, rolling out vaccines across a state larger than California, Montana, and California combined, in the dead of winter with dog sleds and helicopters and snow machines and small planes. And at other times, it's given me strength in the times of profound loss, like the death of my sister from suicide, where the challenge was the impossible granite face in front of me was choosing life and joy amid terrible and dark grief. By showing up for the climb, you confront the monsters that you live up close. They might just be scared and they might just need a friend. They just might be one handhold after another until a new path becomes clear when none existed. Don't let fear or the comfort of the known stand in the place. Put one foot in front of the other and follow the sparks of your heart and let the possible blend and bend to the possible. Show up for the climb. The second principle is do what's right for your patients and the rest is noise. This story is a bit more graphic, so I'm gonna share the PV, PG version for this uh, mixed audience. Um, but I was in my last shift in my uh, residency training. We were at a new program, and there was a lot of tension between who was gonna do what, and it was actually five minutes before the end of my shift, which was an overnight from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., and we received a call that a young man had been stabbed in the chest. As they landed, he lost his pulses, and EMS started to do chest compressions. There's a very rare uh, uh, procedure that you can do, kind of a Hail Mary called an emergent thoracotomy that can be done within 10 minutes of losing a pulse, offering a slim chance of saving a life. As it happened, the trauma team had actually left a few minutes early. The replacements had not shown up. And there were just a few of us there, and so we had to make the only decision we could, to open his chest and to save a life. Insert lots of bloody details here, but the next thing I knew, I was the little Dutch boy with my finger in his heart we asked him to turn on the transfuser, and just like that, the heart started to fill around my finger and it started to beat again. I stood there in awe of the human body, grateful for my training and our collective courage to act, and a little stuck on how I was gonna get my finger out. One week later, he was discharged from the hospital, fully back to his old self, a bit score and a, score and a scar on the side of his chest, and then the criticism started to roll in. Why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way? You should have waited for, you should have considered. Ground rounds and case reviews, med reviews and chatter. And I began to second guess myself. I started to question whether I should have intervened or not. What if the situation had been different? Should we have tried a different procedure first? And then my anger stirred. I wanted to vent my frustrations. Why weren't they there when we needed them? Why were they late for their shift? Why were we getting blamed? And then a wise attending told me, Anne, do what's right for the patient, and remember that the rest is noise. Never forget that. Your patients are your true north. In the emergency department is the patients I'm seeing today, and as the chief medical officer of the state of Alaska, it's the people in the state that I serve. Don't be bothered by the noise. And with that, my doubt and my anger faded. And that noise and that voice rings true in my head every day. Why did you do this? Why did you recommend that? How about this? Don't you care about this or that, my policies, my politics, my stress or job or me? And when the noise rings definitely loud, I pause and I remember that peaceful clarity. I'm reminded of the boy who was once dead and walked home. I'm reminded to do what's right for the patient and remember that the rest is noise. The third point I have is short yet critical. And it's less of a story, but something that I think must always be said. Be kind. 
When my children were young, I came across a quote from Cinderella when her mother says, all I ask of you is to be courageous and kind. I've never regretted showing kindness. I've only regretted moments when I have been unkind. In his autobiography, Will Smith shares wise words from his grandmother, Gigi, who told him, be nice on your way up because you might just see them on the way back down. It's easy to choose kindness when the circumstances are favorable, but it's equally important to choose kindness during challenging times, like letting go of an employee, dealing with an abusive boss, or disciplining a child. Kindness does not mean an absence of boundaries. Rather, it means approaching situations from a place of empathy, recognizing that we're all doing the best we can with the information and tools that are disposable. Another, from a, another quote from a Disney movie that I often think of is, people make bad choices when they're mad or scared or stressed. So choose kindness. And my last gift is a gift I received recently from a wise friend when she challenged me on my next steps. She said to me, this is not your knowledge to keep. Who are you carrying with you? It was a challenge to share and to connect, to create and to mentor. Doing is important. It is good and it is hard work. But just like how the, book of an endi how the ending of a book will make or break the whole story, who we share our knowledge with, who we mentor, will determine if our doing lasts. Our response in Alaska was shaped by the knowledge shared by Alaska Native elders from the 1918 pandemic, and I am so grateful to them. How you share your knowledge will determine the future. And this is not advice for later. This is advice for today. You have been given an immense tool in your training to support and supported by the people who love you, but it is not yours to keep. It is yours to share and carry someone with you. These are small stories, pieces of my heart that I give to you, and you can forget them or you can choose to remember, but please never forget that you have chosen a stunningly beautiful profession public health by doing, which is really more than a motto, it's an affirmation of life's purpose, and a reminder that there is meaning in the doing. As Amanda Gorman says, justice is just us. We started by embracing this moment, all that it took to get here, and now that you are done, and so is this speech. Your graduation is here, and the next journey starts, one of showing up for the climb with kindness and courage, with clarity of purpose as your classmate Catherine Thomas shared, one of passion. May you give as much as you received. May you show up for others as often as interim dean has showed up for your sports games or the Celtics showed up for last night, even at the very last moment. <laughs> and may the sparks of joy and inspiration help guide you and guide us all to a brighter future. Now, not to alarm you, but check under your chair there is no golden ticket. There is no keys to a new car. This is not the Oprah Winfrey show. After all, it is public health. Um, but you will find a small token of my gratitude, a little note of sorts to remind you for today. So thank you for giving me this tremendous honor of sharing this day with you. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Yay. I'm not the best artist. I was an art minor, but I had to give myself more time to do art, so this gave me an excuse to do it. <laughs> So may I extend my heartiest congratulations to the marvelous, the extraordinary, the beautiful, and the courageous class of 2023 Brown School of Public Health. Thank you, Dr. Zink. Anne, I've known you and shared the trenches as an emergency physician and public health professional for so, so many years. And I'm unbelievably touched by your sharing your experience and perspective. I think that all of us are going to remember those four lessons. And gosh, I wish that those of us up here on the stage had stickers too. So we might get a second order to pass around <laughs> I can't imagine a more meaningful address for our graduates in this moment of transition. Thank you also, Ron, for your kind words about our time working together. It has been a pleasure and a privilege to serve alongside you, our chairs, our associate deans, our directors of our master's programs, our graduate program directors, 
to maintain our commitment to our students, to the larger community of our school, to work together to strengthen our mission here at the Brown School of Public Health of learning public health by doing public health, and to help shape the future of public health in our country and in the world. Today, we proudly recognize our graduating students of the class of 2023. Our goal over the past two years or three years or seven years, however long you've been with us, has been to share the insights that you need to identify important social challenges, the knowledge necessary to rigorously define health problems and impacts, and the skills to intervene appropriately and effectively to improve the health of those who are suffering. As Dr. Zink so eloquently shared, the last few years, but also your entire journey to this point, have demonstrated how clearly important the discipline of public health is. When I got my MPH from Brown, we weren't even a school yet. Public health was a little bit of a neglected field. My parents said, what's a degree of public health? <laughs> It was a poor cousin to, med to medicine and to biomedical innovation. As I look around at this overly full tent, I know that that question is not present today. In 2023, the value of your Brown degree could not be clearer, and not only because of the skills that you are taking with you. I have to say personally, as I transition away from this university after nearly 20 years here, I hope to bring with me what I know that all of you are going to bring into your next steps. Our uniquely Brunonian ethos of collaboration across disciplines and in true partnership with communities. To the corporation members, Marty and Joelle, thank you for being here. To our graduates, I assure you that we all have the chance to live the spirit of being ever true. I don't need to tell you this, public health is critically important and we need each of you, each of our graduates, whether undergraduate, undergraduate MPH, masters or PhD, with your brilliance and your heart more than ever before. So without further ado, I am delighted but also a little nervous because I get to read the names to award degrees to the 2023 graduating class. Thank you. So first, I am so proud to begin with the Bachelor of Arts, Concentration in Public Health. I think you come up. <laughs> and let's see, I'm not sure, you're supposed to, maybe I'm gonna turn this, because I've gotta read, maybe I'll just shout your name. I'm gonna read the names really loud. <laughs> Isabel, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna do a little dance here. Isabel Aguirre. I've had the, there are a bunch of you all that I've had the privilege to work with, and that's just lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Samantha and Dara. Thank you. Nikita Baragala Lopez. Caroline Bayless. Thank you. Keelan Ann Bowie. I need to get behind there. I need to get behind. Okay. We're going to figure this out. Erin Ping. Yevin Chung. Thank you. Catherine Dowling. Thank you. Owen Fahey.
Thank you. Congratulations. Hannah James Fernandez. Thank you. Sydney Fisher. Thank you. Gabriela Garcia. Bryn Giafredi. Birutawit Georgis. Thank you. Katie Gu. Good to see you. Yemi Haile Mariam. Faith Hardy. <laughs> Abigail Healy. <laughs> Jihuan Huang. <laughs> Love the heels. Nayeli Jimenez Alvarado. Thank you. Allison Kim. Grace Ju Un Kim. Elise Kreitzer. Thank you. Brian Kwan. Nelson Fong Yuan Lin. Sarah Mansoor. Rishik Manfinu. <laughs> Miriam Marlink. <laughs> Shade Oletan Butsan. <laughs> Syria Art Ortiz. Daniela Aditi Pahari. <laughs> Amelia Panel. <laughs> Julia Pierce. <laughs> Neil Rupani. Catherine, oh, sorry, Catherine Silver. <laughs> Diane Story. <laughs> Thank you. Melina Tidwell Torres. Zephaline Huerta Villalobos. <laughs> Rachel Warner. <laughs> Zakaya Whitaker. Whitaker, I apologize. <laughs> Caitlin Wong. Thank you. 
Jin Shi Jong. Any Ju. Thank you. Elizabeth Zucker. Cicely Davy. Alexandra Josephson. Chloe Elise Vincent. Ha Jung Kim. Otto Magnus Bjarkason Olafsson. Thank you. Bryn McGlinchey. Rosemary Perez. Ella Jean Poli. And now the Bachelor of Science, Concentration in Statistics. And I'm just gonna grab a quick glass of water. Hold on one sec, sorry. It's really hot and I've been on stage for a lot of hours, so apologies. Thank you. All right, <laughs> come on up you guys, congratulations. Bachelor of Science, Concentration in Statistics. Anurjan <laughs> Nugules what's Swarin? I apologize. I, <laughs> Thank you. Linda Saya Wakamoto. Thank you. Colby Zarl. We will now acknowledge our graduate students who received their diplomas in ceremonies, some very long ceremonies I hear, earlier today. Will the graduates who have earned a doctoral degree in behavioral and social health sciences please come to the stage? Pablo Coque Valente. Will the graduates have, who have earned a doctoral degree in biostatistics please come to the stage? Uh, I don't, do you have a card with your name? <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay, go ahead. Congratulations. <laughs> Will the graduates who have earned a doctoral degree in epidemiology please come to the stage? Biostatistics number two. <laughs> Thank you. Jiabe Young. Now Epi. <laughs> Congratulations. Rachel Yorlitz. Will the graduates who have earned a doctoral degree in health services research please come to the stage? Congrats. Derek T. Lake. Thank you. Bishnu Bahadur Thapa. I think. Catherine D. Thompson. <laughs> Nick.
Now, on to our master's degree recipients. Will the graduates who have earned a Master of Science in Biostatistics please come to the stage? Thank you. Antonella Basso. <laughs> Kayla Finlayson. Anthony Gerard. Timothy Hogan Hedspeth. Anusha Kumar. Abraham Liu. Nancy Liu. Congratulations. Amos Ochieng Okutsi. Rofens Omu Ojiambo. Talia Justine Seshia. Seshia, sorry. <laughs> Will the graduates who have earned a Master of Science in Global Health please come to the stage? That's Kiara. Kiara R. Lee. Megan Nicole Ferragni. Yeah. Nancy Alima Nkudu. Yeah. Will the graduates who have earned a Master of Science in Clinical and Translational Research please come to the stage? Thank you. Nina Carlson Ayala. Now, will the graduates who have earned a Master of Public Health please come to the stage? Ariana Allman. Sammy Amki. Dana Claire Antonazzi. <laughs> David, congrats. David Aranga. <laughs> I know his name without having to look at the card, but <laughs> thank you. Mohammed Bake, congrats. Yuri Benajoud. <laughs> Elizabeth Jane Bergeron. <laughs> Lucas Blackmore. <laughs> Sarah Jillian Blau. Christopher Lawrence Britton. Oh, honey. Esteem Brumfield. Caroline Grace Bugby. Now y'all are making me emotional too. <laughs> 
Thank you. Shaughnessy Burks. Don Pierre Hakeem Burnett. Rebecca Lumina Carrera. <laughs> Zoe Victoria Carter. Congratulations. Jordan Chandler Lee. Ray Tai Che. Marvin Chaudhary. Alana Joy Clark. Justin Coleman. Emily Cromit. Madison Josephine Davis. Tori Davis. Abraham Uhuru Dejene. Elena DeSanti. Ariel Desir. Alina Dewagi. Cody Michael Douglas. Uchen Bo. Emma Egan. Congrats. Donna Elaham. Kalichi August Izialagi. Good. Sarah Fishback. Megan Ciara Ford. Sierra. Madeline Lee Fry. <laughs> Yifei Gao. <laughs> Annika Goggins. Julia Gokle. <laughs> William Gold. <laughs> Daniel Hackert. <laughs> Olivia Grace Hassinger. Marcus William Henry. Woo! 
Del Rose Newball. Nicole Oluwatito Mason Igbinyemi. Skylar Lily Yusepovich. Katia Jackson. Darcy Nicole Johnson. Joshua Benjamin Kalfas. Kristen Celia Kame. Mama Swatsi Pearl Kopeka. Lindsay Marie Krell. Natalia Kirichenko. Kiara Michaela Vernice Lee. Kiara. Kiara, I apologize. I try my best. Sorry. <laughs> Singa Clara Lee. David Philip Lewander. <laughs> Connie Lynn. <laughs> Yan Chen Liu. <laughs> Emily Ching Ma. Laurel Mangelsdorf. <laughs> Margaret Maris. <laughs> Kiana Crisanta Alves Martins. Kayla Aranya McClymont. Cameron Miller Jacobs. Malik Shakem Mitchell. Lena Majarad, Majarad. Abigail Reese Murdoch. Catherine Taggart Nash. Serafina Dawit Negasha. <laughs> Madeline No. <laughs> Thank you. Siraji Ahmed Omoru. Yaruska Ordenola Perez. (laughs) 
Olubumi Onjulik Ozias. Jolene Keisha Owuse Setre. <laughs> Hannah Rebecca Parent. <laughs> Carolyn Francis Pierce. Sophia Rose Petrilla. <laughs> I gotta say, I love the energy in this crowd. <laughs> Kimberly Pintowski. Thank you. Christian Rodolfo Ramos. Grace Reed. Congrats, Grace. Hannah Reese. Mayan Naomi Rosenfield. Jessica Schuler. Ty Devone Scott. <laughs> Yuki Kagawa Hayashi Sa Sato Shiozawa. Kristen Camille Smith. Madison Anna Smith. Jalisa Sanislaus. Kendall Stern. <laughs> Surenma Sukbatar. Kento Suzuki. Heming. Tang. Darlene Tat. Sidonia Cherie Thomas. Arnell Mushia Toffee. <laughs> Hui Duk Jung. <laughs> Jenna Marie Wall. Lavelle Freeman Williams. <laughs> Bailey Michelle Wilson. <laughs> Lucille Jung.
Jeremiah Amari Zablon. Amy Jang. Urza Gashi. I, I really just have to say the energy, the support that you are all giving to each other absolutely blows me away. So really... It's extraordinary. With that, our last but far from least cohort will the graduates who have earned a dual degree, Master of Public Health and Master of Public Affairs, please come to the stage. Kethural Menohuran. Kelly Elizabeth Russell. Before I congratulate you, let me please ask you to each always remember to support each other with the same energy that you have shown for each other today. And with that, please join me in congratulating the students of the class of 2023. We're one last small bit of remarks from interim Dean O'Bear, and then we let you all out of this hot tent. So thank you. Wow. So I'm, I'll get you out of here quickly. Um, I can, in fact, uh, I'm just going to skip right down to the end closing. <laughs> and in closing, it is, no, but in all seriousness, um, it has been, a tremendous honor for me to serve as your dean over this past year. Um, and I, I cannot say that um, in a more sincere and serious way. So many of you have been just extraordinarily supportive, um, you know, uh, and I, you know, I just really appreciate that. I so deeply appreciate that. Um, and many of you have known for a long time, and some of you I just met by crashing your Doug events and your GSC events, as long as they have food, I would pop in. So thank you for your support. Um, I am so looking forward to the great things you're going to do after you leave here, and maybe some of you will see back. The fifth years, those of you in the fifth year will see you back. And I want to just leave you with something that I'm not sure of the origins, but it was really meaningful to me. Um, and it goes like this. To meet and part is a fact of life. To part and meet again is the hope of life. So class of 2023, thank you again. Congratulations. Good luck. And I am hopeful that we will meet again. <laughs>